Hello everyone, my name's Tom and this is going to be my first ever Blender tutorial. And the reason I'm doing it is because I recently discovered, and by recently I mean this afternoon, I discovered a way to do something that I've been trying to do for many, many days. And it was driving me pretty crazy. Um, and I just thought that maybe other people were struggling with this too, because I looked online, I looked everywhere. I asked a few people and nobody seemed to know exactly how to achieve what I'm going to show you. So I'm sure other people do know how to do it. Um, I'm not saying this is my technique or anything like that, but I'm basically going to show you what I learned and hopefully it will be useful to you. If you don't know what Blender is, then I don't really know what you're doing here. No, I'm joking. Uh, if you don't know what Blender is, it's a fantastic open source 3D program. Uh, it has two incredible built-in render engines. One's real-time called EV, and one is called Cycles, which is a ray traced based engine. Uh, you can do pretty much anything that other paid for programs can do. So I am a huge advocate for Blender. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of amazing Blender users out there. YouTube is full of incredible tutorials. You've got the Blender guru, uh, Andrew Price. You've got CG Geek. There's just so many, so many people out there that are willing to teach you. So if you find you're stuck with nothing to do, then I seriously suggest you download Blender. It's completely free um, and start watching some tutorials and you'll pick it up pretty quickly. It's very intuitive once you get going with it. Uh, start with some of the basic tutorials and you will be good to go. So I'm just gonna give this basic cube a little bit of color. I'm gonna switch to cycles, GPU, and we'll go into rendered view mode here. So this is our base cube and our base color. Now, what I've been doing is adding a plane. Um, and I'll just rotate that by 90 degrees. Oh. What I've been trying to do is add graffiti to walls. And the way I've found, the best way I've found to do that is to get the plane right in front of the wall surface like that. Then we're gonna to go to our shader tab, add a new material, add an image texture, and let's just add, um, let's just add this face graffiti image here. We can rotate it 90 degrees that way. Now, let's say you want just the face and not the background. This does require a PNG with an alpha channel, which this one does already, I've already tested it. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is add in a mix shader Drop that in there. Then we're going to add a transparent shader. Where are we? Transparent shader there. And we're going to connect those two up. And then we're going to use the alpha channel from the image texture as the factor of the mix. Now, if you get that result, just swap them over. And you should have the image that you want relatively stuck to the cube. Now, I knew how to do that before, but graffiti is never clean like that. It's always slightly faded. And if you've got a textured wall behind, maybe a brick texture or something like that, maybe you want this image to be slightly faded out. And what I used to do was to add a noise texture, add a mix RGB node into the image texture channel there. Uh, we're going to need a color ramp. Um, so we'll collect the color of the noise to the color ramp. 
and then the color ramp into the RGB node there. We'll switch this to multiply and then crank the details up to 16. And let's just go into look dev mode. We're going to also need to go down to viewport display here and change the blend mode to alpha blend. Just makes it a little bit easier for us to see. Crank the multiply up to one. Now, as you can see, the noise texture is giving us a bit of color variation, a bit of fade and a bit of grime, which is kind of nice. And that's what I've been doing for all of my graffiti textures. But what I wanted to be able to do was to mask or to hide certain parts of this. And it, I've, I've, I've tried all sorts of different ways. I've tried gradients, I've tried uh, adding and subtracting in many other different ways, but the best way I found to do it is to simply duplicate the mix shader, duplicate the transparent shader, plug that into there like that, and now this basically controls the transparency for the whole thing, but we want the factor to be controlled by the noise. So we'll drop the color from the noise into the factor of the mix shader. Now. I'm just going to change the color of the cube so you can see what's actually happening behind here. I'll change it to a bright red color. Now, as you can see, as we adjust the noise values, it affects the transparency of the image. And if we play around with it, we can tweak it. We can get it to look faded. We can get it to look however you like. So very simple in the end, just requires another mix shader and another transparent shader and then using the, uh, using the color from the noise texture, which has gone through a color ramp into the factor of the mix shader. And yeah, that's basically it. And you can do this with any image you like. So let's try a different one. So we can just tweak these values. You can make it fade in, fade out as much as you like, make it look really worn. Play around with the scale of the noise as much as you like. And that's how you control the transparency of an image placed on top of another texture. Now, we don't just have to use noise. We could use a Musgrave here, for example. Let's just swap those out. Ah, oh, that's better. Just had to change that to multi-fractal. Multi -fractal. Change the scale. We could even combine both of these if we wanted to with a mix RGB. So now we've got the noise and the Musgrove texture. Not that you probably want to do that because it's very worn now, but yeah. So that's basically it. That's all I wanted to show you. And it's saved me, I'll say it's saved me a load of time. It will save me a load of time in the future. Um, but that's the node setup there. If you want to copy it, take a screenshot. And yeah, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments if it does. Um, and if I discover any more techniques or tips like that, I will make another video um, and maybe show you some more stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.